Believers, I'm going to start this video with a parable. Let's say that there is a house party. You are invited. Some classmate, some ex-classmate you used to go to school with has a house party. And many people are invited. Now, as a believer, you likely don't want to be at such place. But let's say you attend the place. And let's say the house party ends at 2 a.m. in the morning. Is it appropriate for you to remain over there? at that place until 6 a.m. in the morning, even though the house party ended at 2 a.m.? Now, if you consented with the owners, not owners, with the property owners, that you will stay till 6 in the morning to catch a bus, that's fine. But if there's no agreement on you staying there till 6 in the morning while the party was done at 2 in the morning, what's going to happen? You've overstayed your invitation with four hours. By law, you've trespassed on the property and you will be arrested for that. Now let's give another example. Let's say you go to a shopping mall and you're there shopping and you leave, but then you forget that you left your uh, coat in the mall. And you go back to the mall, but you see that the mall is closed. So you can wait till Monday, but let's say that on some days the mall is closed. But you think, I want my coat. If you jump over the fence, or you break a lock to enter the mall to get your coat, even though you just went into the mall to get your coat, yeah, you didn't steal from any shop or whatever, you will still be arrested for trespassing because the mall was closed. Even though you intended no harm, people tell you, listen, the mall was closed. If everyone would do that, we wouldn't have any grip anymore on the mall. So, in both examples, both of the house party and of the mall, there's one thing in common. You overstate your invitation. Now, you were not literally invited to the mall, but the mall is designed to attract customers and you were welcome as a customer. But you were only welcome during the opening hours, not outside of it. Now, this video is not about validating property rights because God owns everything. We own nothing. We know that. We only have possessions during this lifetime that we leave behind when our bodies expire. So this video is not about validating property claims that fallen mankind has, for which they fight wars and kill one another. This video is to inspire you to examine the season you're in. And I will entitle this video, Never Overstay Your Season. Let me explain. Let's say that you, you know what, let me use a biblical example, that's better. Joseph. Joseph was sent to Egypt as a slave. I mean, he was sold into slavery. There he ended up in jail or something he didn't do, and he ended up becoming the prime minister of Egypt. He governed Egypt for 80 years. At age 110, he died. Before he died, actually, a while before he died, but he left a will in which he stated that when the Israelites would leave Egypt, they would take his bones with him out of Egypt because Joseph governed the Egyptian empire. The Egyptians were devil worshippers. Those pyramids were symbols of devil worship. And Joseph knew that him governing this satanic country that became dominant in the world was an exception. Joseph was not from an Egyptian noble household. He did not went through all the rituals. He was a slave that what became a convict. So him being in that position to govern Egypt and the rest of the world was a very rare exception. And he knew that there was a God that arranged it so that he would use his influence to benefit the Israelites. So he did, he followed God's plan. He reconciled with his brothers. They left the past behind and they multiplied and became a nation. But Joseph knew that one day he's going to die. 
that he will not be alive to witness the exodus into the promised land. So Joseph also knew that, okay, I'm not going to witness that, but it will happen. And Joseph had knowledge. Joseph became a big leader for the Israelites. All for Egypt, but he was an Israelite. So if the Israelites were meant to have their own country to possess the land of Canaan, but Joseph's bones would be in a pyramid in Egypt, then the Israelites would, uh, would be stuck in going back to Egypt just to visit that honorable leader of theirs that helped them. So Joseph made plain when you leave Egypt, take my bones with you so that you won't have any connection with a satanic country. Joseph was smart. And so Joseph made plain to them, make sure that after I die, you leave this country to possess Canaan, as God's plan is. Because Joseph looked at the bigger picture. Joseph realized, okay, this is Egypt, this is not the land of Canaan. The Israelites are not a powerful people yet to possess the land of Canaan, but the moment they become a powerful people, they should leave Egypt, or else the Egyptians are going to feel threatened by them. Joseph looked at the bigger picture. That's why even in his will, he hid them, leave Egypt where you can, and take my boats with you. So that the Egyptians will not have a leverage over you. But what happened? Joseph died. And, well, and another pharaoh rose up shortly afterwards, who had no remembrance of Joseph. He was from a new generation. And in this new generation, the Israelites were a powerful nation within Egypt. But they outnumbered the Egyptians. So the Egyptians became frightened, and together they came with a plot to exterminate Israel. And they ended up in slavery. Genocide was committed onto them. Now hold on a minute. How could this have happened? If they would have listened to what Joseph told them, after Joseph died, maybe a decade or two, they would have left Egypt and, uh, and looked for the Lord's presence to guide them into the promised land. But because they overstayed their time in Egypt, they got in trouble. Look, Egypt was used by the Most High as a temporary home for the Israelites to grow from a small clan of 70 people into a nation. The moment they became a nation, because they increased in number, they should realize, okay, Egypt served its purpose. We need to get out of here. Joseph is dead. Egypt served its purpose for us. Now we need to move on. But those Israelites, they stayed in Egypt, were comfortable in Egypt. They had their lives built up in Egypt. And because of this, when the need for them being in Egypt was gone, trouble arose. And now, let's look at your life. Now, I don't know all of you who's listening to this. I don't. I have thousands of subscribers, and, and even there are many other people who are listening to me who are unsubscribed to this channel. But I dare to say that in the lives of many of you, when you reflect back, you will realize that somewhere you overstayed a season. Somewhere you remained in relationships you should have gotten out of a long time ago. Somewhere you, hold, you held on to certain ideas that didn't serve you well anymore. For example, some of you were told by your parents don't talk to strangers, which is practical. When you're a little child, you shouldn't talk to strangers because you have child predators out there. And you can be kidnapped, so it was a practical thing. But once you became a teenager and you were developing into adulthood, you should begin to talk to strangers because you have to expand, you have to live. But there are, many, there are many people that hold on to this idea, don't talk to strangers. So they end up missing out on opportunities, missing out on blessings in life because they hold on to ideas that don't serve them well anymore. So, just like those Israelites did not take heed to what Joseph, their leader, said, after Joseph died, they got into trouble that they, should, that they could have easily avoided. And that's why... Many generations later, the most I rose of Moses that he used to deliver them with ten mighty plagues and by uh, opening the Red Sea. Eventually, God used it all for his glory to magnify his name throughout the earth. 
And that will happen to us also, that God will overrule things to glorify His name. But it doesn't mean that we have a license to make bad decisions. We don't. We should, to our best ability, glorify the Heavenly Father, not by our own strength, nor by, by, by our own understanding, but by being practical, being flexible, and looking at the bigger picture. Some of you are listening to this. God has been telling you to get out of certain relationships. Some of you have friends that are good to you. They don't mean you harm. They are your homies or they are your girlfriends. Um, they are people that supported you when you were down. So those are not negative-minded people that only exploit you. Those are people that were good to you. Some of you were depressed, some of you were homeless, and you had people that reached out to you. And so those relationships were fruitful and beneficial. But now God is telling you, get out of those relationships, lower contacts, so that the contact fades away. In that way, you depart from them in peace and you continue. Because where God wants you to be, they cannot come. But because you persist in those relationships, you miss out on what God has for you. There are guys out there who keep looking for the right woman. An ideal that culture imprinted in them to look for the right one. And because of that, they end up being the prey to Jezebel witches who mirror all their expectations. And because they held on to their cultural conditioning, they became the victim of predators. And by becoming the victim of predators now, years of their lives were wasted, being exploited by evildoers, and now more years passed by that they had to recover. Well, if they would have renewed their mind and unlearned those ways of the world, they could have bypassed all of that. And those years would have been spent sowing and investing in God's kingdom. The same way there are women who have ideas of what a man ought to be. And they don't even check whether expectations are realistic or whether it adds up. Those expectations of this are validated and enabled by society. And they, as females, want to be in harmony with the community. So they proceed in those expectations and they end up with guys that are horrible and some of them don't even survive and even die. Because they never looked at the bigger picture, they never self-reflected and they never examined their own expectations. Too many people are holding on to ideas that have expired. If you are in the jungle and suddenly this lion or this uh, crocodile appears out of nowhere, then your body has adrenaline. You are in a survival mode, then you need to run. That's appropriate. But if you're not in the jungle anymore and you're at home, then this survival mode is inappropriate. This survival mode outside of immediate physical danger is going to cause defective thinking in you. And you have a lot of people that operate in a survival mode because they want to prevent others from hurting them or exploiting them. They develop what they, what they call boundaries in the world just to bind others into not harming them. And the world tells you to enforce boundaries, to um, hold on to your privacy and all of that, but all of that are worldly teachings that bind you and all those teachings have side effects. So there are a lot of believers who are holding on to outdated knowledge because that knowledge does not apply to, them, to their situation anymore. Look, all of us need to be cleansed from the world. All of us. That's why we ought to walk by faith. That's why we ought to rely on the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, some of you have overstayed your season. Some of you right now, God is telling you to do certain things that you just aren't doing. You have to do your part. Do your part. When the Holy Spirit moves you to do something, do it. Don't worry about the consequences. The Holy Spirit will take care of the consequences. Do it. And there's one thing that most of us 
are trapped by, and that's false comfort. You may have a 9 to 5 job, and there was a time after you graduated college that this 9 to 5 was beneficial, when you had to move out of your parents' house or when you had to move out of the student dorm and you need to have your own place. So there was a time the 9 to 5 was beneficial to you. But now, you've been to this 9 to 5 for more than a decade, and now time is passing by, you're exhausted all the time, you're not making use of the talents and gifts God has given to you, so now the Holy Spirit is pushing you to quit this 9 to 5. So that means you need to go and live in a, small, in a smaller flat, or you may have to live cheaper, so things need to change, and it's going to be a bit uncomfortable. But because you feel so comfortable having that paycheck at the end of the month, because you have this um, high in your brain that you get from seeing that paycheck, you are now addicted to this validation of having this paycheck. You are addicted to the validation to, of you getting approval of your boss. Well, your employer shouldn't call any human being your boss. So now, we have this false comfort that holds you back, that even destroys you over time because you get exhausted by working so much. But because you remain, in, because you abide in this false comfort instead of abiding in God's word, now you end up losing your land of Canaan. You end up not crossing the Red Sea and you end up remaining vulnerable to predators. Listen, anytime you overstay your season, it triggers problems, it triggers harm, it triggers side effects that you don't want to deal with. Well, problems don't really exist. I already explained it in other videos. So instead of problems, let me say it triggers unnecessary trouble. Do not overstay your season anywhere in this lifetime. Be at peace.